In this video, we're going to be talking about my 1970 Kawasaki H1500 LC. It's liquid cooled, it revs to 10,000 RPM and it flies. We'll talk about how I made it and then we'll take it for a ride. The first thing I had to do was to convert some Kawasaki KH500 crankcases into four cylinder, like I do for my air cooled versions. Then tried to fit some Yamaha RD250 LC barrels. The problem was they didn't fit. The crankcase mouths were too small, so I had to open those up. The studs were in the wrong place. The deck heights were wrong. The pistons would come straight out the top of the cylinders. So I had to make a new crankshaft as well, which had a standard 54 millimeter stroke. I used Yamaha parts with new bearings and labyrinth seals, then line board the crankcases to make it all fit together. I used a standard Kawasaki KH500 gearbox and the ratio has worked out about fine, although this engine does rev, rev to 10,000 rather than eight, so it goes much further in each gear. The crankshaft's made from Yamaha parts, so it didn't match with a Kawasaki alternator or Kawasaki primary drive sprocket, so I had to remachine them. In the barrels, I had vapor blasted to give a nice silver finish to match the Kawasaki crankcases. I'll walk around the bike now explaining some of the features. The front forks, front wheel and yokes are from a Kawasaki H2 because they are much stronger than the early 500 forks. I fitted the standard H1 Kawasaki headlight ears by making special adapters. The headlight is also from the early 1970 H1. I removed the caliper mounting lug from the right hand fork leg to make it more slender looking for the 500 LC. And also I fitted a stainless steel mudguard because the H2 mudguard looked too heavy when it was on the bike. The steering damper is from a Kawasaki H2B and fits perfect. I made the radiator from a dual core racing radiator that was meant for an RD350 LC. But I also included an electrically operated fan that's turned on using a Suzuki GT750 thermostat switch. Under the seat I've got an expansion bottle for the coolant. I made a mechanical water pump to fit where the distributor used to be. I used the impeller from a KX250 motocross bike and it works just perfect. I machined up a water temperature gauge housing out of a billet of aluminium and I used a bezel from an old ammeter and the internal workings are from a GT750 Suzuki. It works perfect. The petrol tank holds pure petrol with no oil mixed. Oil is metered into the engine via a separate pump that once belonged to a Kawasaki H2B. The pump has four outlets, so I can use one for each independent cylinder. The oil pump sits behind the water pump and is controlled by the throttle cable, so as you go faster, more oil is injected, and when you go slower, less oil is injected. This hopefully reduces the amount of smoke. The two-stroke oil is held in a tank on the side of the frame, and it has a really nice little sight gauge at the back. The cap is from a GT500. It's made of aluminium and looks much nicer than the plastic Kawasaki one. I had to reshape the kickstart because the engine's slightly wider, so I put a kink in it, so when it folds out it works, and when it folds in it misses your leg. The speedo and rev counter are standard for a 1970 H1. I think I'm definitely going to paint the water temperature gauge black. For some reason I left it shiny. I don't know why, but I did. The choke and throttle work well considering they're pulling up the extra carburetor, but they're still light and smooth. The front brake's hydraulic on this bike because the front ends from a H2 Kawasaki, which has a hydraulic disc. The standard H1 1970 would have a drum operated by a cable. The modified gear lever works with the same shift pattern, which is neutral down, five up. The back brake fits in its original position on the same pivot. It's just been reshaped for the wider engine. 
I made a 4 into 4 stainless steel expansion chamber exhaust system for the Kawasaki 500LC and I like to tuck my exhaust systems in so they fit closely to the bike. So here's how I start. These little flat sheets of stainless are cut out from cardboard templates. Then they're rolled up around a piece of bar using my hide hammer and TIG welded together. The front header pipes are from a Kawasaki H2B and fit just perfect. I fitted four new Makuni racing carburetors. They're 28mm diameter and have special plugs at the bottom so you can get the main jets in and out with ease. This was lucky because sorting out the jetting took me ages and ages, but I got there in the end. The four carburetors are connected to a single KNN filter that's meant for an RD400. With the left-hand side panel removed, we can take a better look. I used old waste pipe to make the actual ducting. This is plastic and can be moulded and shaped. And the chain guard is from an early H2. The rear brake is fitted with this unique and novel air intake adjuster, so you can make the air go in to cool the brake or shut it off if it's wet. Bit of a novelty really, but I guess it works, I suppose. The ignition system is points, and there are four sets of points behind the left-hand side cover. Hello, is that Neil? It's Alan. Thinking about going out on my 500LC for a spin. Do you fancy coming along? What, you're in Southampton with Mandy? Oh, well, never mind. Maybe another time. See ya, bye.
home and in the garage after the ride on my Kawasaki 500. It takes a while to calm down. It makes you really buzz. But soon, I'll be going out on my Flying Milliard 5-litre V-twin. That's totally different. It revs to 1,500 RPM and idles at 350. Totally different. But a great machine to ride. Anyway, see you all soon. And don't forget to subscribe.